Um, so this is work I've done together with um, PhD student Sangeeta Kakati here. Um, and um, we are interested in a scenario which is related to the cloud edge continuum. Um, so we're considering a situation where we have distributed applications that we want to place in an infrastructure that stretches from data centers, uh, possibly multiple data centers of different organizations, and to the edge devices, IoT devices, or uh, phone devices, and, and whatnot. Um, this, um, this is a, um, a use case scenario which is uh, sometimes real-time dependent, uh, we want to have quality of service or service level objectives, and it's all constraint driven. We also observe that we, in this kind of infrastructure, we have an increasing heterogeneity. Uh, certainly x86 variants and ARM processors are, are all prevalent, and I'm expecting to see a lot more RISC-V architectures in the wild as well. And then we have a bunch of accelerators of various kinds. Those we're not targeting yet, but that will be, be in, in the future. So this is our context, and this is the case for WebAssembly. We want to have schedulable WASM modules and use them as an architecture independent target. And we want to understand now how, how performant are the different runtimes that exist currently and what are the resource requirements. And we have partly address this here. The, this questions have been sort of investigated over and over again, but WebAssembly is such a moving target, so it's it's worthwhile doing it every so often. Um, so we did a bunch of experiments using uh, a, a GitHub repo called WA Bench, uh, done by um, a researcher at Georgia University. Um, and uh, it's, it's available, um, as I said, on GitHub. This is basically a collection of already existing uh, collections of, of programs that previously have been used for, for assessing WebAssembly performance. We have Polybench, GetStream, and MyBench, which are various kinds of micro benchmarks of, of smaller and larger scale. Uh, and they have then a collection of, of so-called whole applications, but larger applications like face detection, inference, uh, MNIST training and, and, and things like that. We have taken the, the, the this repo, uh, forked it and annotated the benchmarks for finer grain timing measurements. So if we consider the execution of a, of a WebAssembly program in, in uh, a bunch of steps, you have first the runtime startup, which reads the file. So we're talking about CLI runtimes here, WebAssembly runtimes that run from the command line, right? So we first load the WebAssembly file, um, compiles it possibly, uh, instantiates it, uh, and then next step is when you, you start to execute the program itself, there is some kind of initialization of, of the setup of, of the experiment, and then it executes in the in interesting phase of execution, and then there possibly is a teardown section uh, where you do printouts and, and whatnot, and then you exit. So we um, added um, timestamps at these points. So when we start the program, when it begins execute, uh, this is step two here. Uh, so number one is when we load it in the runtime. Number two is inside the application in the main function. Number three is sort of the interesting part of the program, which is considered to be the execution phase. Number four, after the interesting part, and then at the exit. So we we measure these these different times. And and what we are reporting here today are mainly the runtime startup measure between one and two, and also the relevant part of code measured between three and four. Okay. Yeah, this is what I said. We had measured the absolute execution time in microseconds, and we also uh, reported relative to native execution time. So we have a bunch of architectures. We compare the runtime uh, to the native. Um, we are using two uh, runtimes here. We use WASM time and WAMR. Um, 
we did initially investigate also was an edge and was um for various reasons we decided to not pursue them further uh, they didn't provide any any additional advantage to our study was had an issue where when, when you ran it on a multi-core processor it initially used up all cores for a long time uh, uh, for some reason uh, i don't know we didn't get a good good explanation as, as to why so that was very didn't fit well in in sort of the execution the context that we had um, was an edge was didn't provide any additional benefit, benefits compared to to Wammer, so we didn't look at them further uh, we are looking at four four platforms two aws metal instances one x86 64 and one arm 64 and then two boards and I'll, I'll show them a little bit later on what they are so here are the aws instances we used um the one uh, arm one neoverse and one processor 64 core processor we only used one but still um and and then um an a intel cm platinum processor um again we only used one for the experiment uh these are the two embedded devices uh, that we investigated the nvidia jetson nano board uh which is an arm 64 processor uh the spec is very similar to this the the, the risk 5 board which is star 5 division 5 2 board um cpu uh, frequency about 1.5 gigahertz um roughly the same amount of cache memory roughly the same amount of of, of main memory which didn't talk about here and they all both ran from from uh, SD card where we had the, the operating system installed um, and again the web runtimes that we used are, are the wasm time uh, we did a fork of these two on 15th of September and then annotated with some time stamp measurements uh, just at the, uh, at the start of the execution when you load start to load the WebAssembly program. What is interesting here is, uh, so wasm time is written in Rust, uh, compile it for the release target. Uh, when you compile it, it's roughly 38, 37, 38 megabytes size of the, 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 the binary. Uh, Wammer can be, com uh, can be configured to be compiled uh, for different sort of uh, running modes. So you have the classic interpreter, which is slightly less than 300 kilobytes. If you only allow that, you have the default, which contains a fast interpreter and the ahead of time comp uh, execution mode, which is slightly more, slightly bigger. And then you have an uh, LLVM based just in time compiler, which is brings it up to the wasm time size or more, 50 megabytes. But they also have a fast JIT uh, um, compiler, which is uh, much uh, smaller in size. Uh, so the runtime then becomes only 600 plus uh, kilobytes in size. Both are bytecode aligned projects, and uh, they are interesting because, in particular, wasm time because it's the bleeding edge. You have all the features and all the new things, and and uh, wasm and wasi features come early there, uh, and wammer because it's it's uh, such so modular you can compile it to become to adapt to the different situation you would like to have. As I said, we. This car, uh, this continued the, the study on Wasmir and Wasmed, uh, but uh, th there are probably new runtimes we should have a look at. Okay, uh, uh, before showing all the graphs I have, uh, general met methodology. We ran all benchmarks different uh, number of, of repetitions, depending on the execution time. The long running programs we ran only one or two, one or three iterations, and the short running programs uh, at least fifteen iterations. And reporting the median value we made sure that they ran on an undisturbed machine we did not do any cpu pinning or freezing the clock frequency which we should have done to, for for maximum accuracy but we didn't really we tried it a couple of times it didn't see much difference in in uh, the results so so for convenience we skipped that now we have a bunch of graphs like this let me show you what, what we have here we have all the 53 or something um benchmarks uh the jetstream 2 my, grouped in jetstream my bench polybench and whole applications what we see here are uh the relative execution time uh of the interesting part of the code um 
relative to native. So you have the line here, one, which sort of represents as good as native. If it's above, it's slower. If it's below, it's faster. Um, we have the four architectures. The blue one is the um, AWS ARM architecture, orange. Uh, orange is the uh, Jetson architecture. The green is the RISC-V. And, and the red um, is the AWS x86 architecture. So we have the two sort of bigger server architectures at, at each side and the two embedded ones in the middle. So some observations we can see already here. Uh, one is that a significant fraction of all these benchmarks, this is for WASM time, by the way, a significant fraction of, of all, all the execution times are close to the one mark, meaning that there is uh, uh, very little overhead compared to native execution. So you see all, all the, basically all the graphs that are around here, you have many of them. Um, there are some benchmarks where risk fog is significantly slower and um, we tried to, to go deeper on that, uh, but didn't fully succeed. Uh, we have some benchmarks like this one, string search. Um, let's see if I can point it out here. here. Uh, this one is, is slow for all architectures. We have some, these Jacobi 1D, 2D, they seem to be uh, relatively better for the embedded architectures than the server-based architectures, which is interesting. Um, yeah, those are sort of the main characteristics here. Uh, this is the same thing for the WAMR. Uh, I was an interpreter. Um, notice the change in scale. It's one to two magnitudes slower than wasn't time, but of course this is interpreted while wasn't time is a just in time compiled. Uh, risk five is still significantly slower for some benchmarks, uh, but interestingly enough, it's also significantly better for a few benchmarks, like like down here. Well, I'll have a, a more deep down um, study on on Wammer a little bit later. Okay, so what impact? Does it have to study just the interesting part of the uh, program compared to the whole application, the, including loading time and, and, and teardown time and so on? So this is the graph when we have the, the just the interesting part, and this is the same for the whole application. And you can infer more or less the same things, but it's more more visible when we look at, at only the interesting part, in particular for the short running programs. Uh, the, the programs to the right here, these are the whole applications, they take a long time to execute. And you, the, here, the difference in sort of how, how it looks is not so, so um, it, it looks very similar when you look at the whole application because the interesting part is so dominant. While other applications like the CG JPEG here, uh, for some reason, uh, the, the sort of initialization part here dominates while this is not visible at all. And is, yeah. The interesting part, does that also include application running code that does its own initialization? Code? No, so that's excluded there. Okay, so, yeah. no, so this is only was an execution time. Yeah. And so, so, the, 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 so, so the, the, we deemed it to be in. So these are sort of micro benchmarks that typically do some kind of setup of uh, initializing data and stuff like that, which is not really interesting to measure on. So that we excluded. That, that's, that's the difference between this graph and that one. And I can go by the annotations. Yes. Yeah. So we annotated the source code and the runtimes. So we uh continue with with uh just looking at, at the interesting part but it's also interesting to look at startup time so the time from that you start uh the runtime starts to execute until the main function in the bunch in the benchmark uh, starts to execute so that includes uh, instantiation it also includes just in time compilation in case you have that um or the loading of the interpreter so here's the wasm time, which is just in time compilation. So you can see here the startup times, they are in microseconds, absolute time, log scale on the y axis. Uh, they are mostly in the range of 30 to 150 milliseconds. It's not too bad. 
but there are some which we haven't yet been able to explain. So if you if you look uh, here, uh, graph here, uh, you see a few for the x86 AWS server, which are very low, one to two milliseconds. And this is something that we yet have to analyze and, and understand why it is, but that goes quite in line with like uh, Fermion's uh, claim uh, on spin because they use this wasn't time that they can have a cold startup time in one millisecond. So, but we need to verify exactly what where this come from. Um, on Wammer interpreted, it's it's generally uh, lower on on the AWS instances at least. It's it's quite consistently low, uh, ten milliseconds less than ten milliseconds startup times. Uh, except for the big uh, programs here, they have a quite long um, sort of. When you have the fi binary files as being long, you have to load it and, and start it, so that takes a longer time. It's not not surprising here. Okay, can we try and some more interesting data? So I looked at a few other programs, for instance, on quick sort, the quick sort and SHA programs. The risk five is substantially slower than the other architectures that are near native. Is there any? Can I find any any um, explanation to this? There are some other programs like Heat3D and Jacobi 2D, where the more advanced architectures, which have out of order execution and things like that, are relatively slower than embedded, which ones which have not. Uh, and there was a program like Big Big. G, which had better than native performance except for risk five and string search was that poor for everyone i didn't get really satisfactory results for for all of this i used the perf tool to collect hardware counter statistics uh but i did it on on the entire execution not on the on the uh, on the interesting part because i don't really know how to do that from WebAssembly. I have to probably, um, well, I don't know yet exactly how to do this. Anyway, for these two programs, so, so the top graph here shows one program, the uh, uh, quick sort, the other, lower part shows the SHA, left side native execution time, uh, no, uh, number of instructions. So it collected number of instructions, number of clock cycles, um, cache misses, uh, and, and uh, branch prediction misses. But I'm reporting on instructions here. So we can see here that wasn't time uses many more instructions for the same thing on RISC-V uh, compared to uh, ARM uh, and x86. Sure. So, um, but I don't know yet why. It could be that the crane did, did you do? Yes? I would have quite a few things I could comment on this, but I also don't want to take up too much time on that. So either here or offline later. I'm happy to talk about it, yeah. Um, I don't know how much people would be interested in that. But I guess the key thing here is that with Clive, um backend is simply much, much younger. Yeah. And there's um, generally very active work on optimizing it. So in fact, I bet you, you forked this a month ago. I bet some of these numbers would right now look quite a bit better because substantial optimization is happening. Cool. Um, I wanted to also try to understand if why the advanced, more advanced architectures were relatively slower than embedded. I didn't find a good solution to that. Uh, this is the number of instructions, didn't explain it all. I can't really infer from, from, from these graphs why the embedded architecture should look relatively better than the more advanced architecture. So that's something we need to, to further investigate. Uh, better than native performance or some same thing i couldn't really infer that from from the instruction number of instruction graph um so yeah this is an area we need to go deeper um i did a study on on, on whammer or i was on on the different running modes um and that gave some interesting results this is the same relative execution time uh, that we've seen before, but only for different um, Whammer execution modes, running mode. You have the blue one 
which is the fast JIT, sort of a very quick just-in-time compiler. So it has low uh, overhead to start uh, and still relatively good performance compared to interpretation. Then we have the LLVM JIT, which is the orange bar, which is the best um, just-in-time compiler they have. And then they have multi-tier, which uh, starts off with the fast JIT and then eventually uh, uh, JITs it all um, with the LLVM. So it's, it should have low start overhead, but the performance of the the LLVM JIT. Uh, some observations here. The LLVM JIT provides the best performance, close to native in most cases. So we have the same sort of relative performance of Whammer with the LLVM JIT as with Wasm time. We have similar sort of size of, of the executable. Um, so on. Uh, we have the big benchmarks or the long running benchmarks to the right here, the WA uh, whole application benchmarks here, they uh, are the ones that benefit mostly from the multi-tier JIT because they take they run so long time so that it makes sense to go and do that. The other ones don't really benefit from it. But even the fast JIT, it's in most cases around two times native performance. So it's still relatively fast compared to uh, the interpreted mode. Uh, when it comes to startup times, again, the blue bar to the left is the fast JIT. It, uh, like consistently around eight milliseconds, even except for the, the, the large binaries. And you can see here that uh, the orange one, which is the LLVM JIT, performs several magnitude orders of magnitudes slower in terms of startup times. But when you go multi-tier, you get the benefit of both worlds for the long-running applications. Uh, you have low startup time and good performance in the long run. So to conclude here, some observations here. Um, Performance-wise, WebAssembly is in good shape. We can get close to, to native execution. Uh, Wammer's fast JIT provides most of the performance without adding significantly to the size. So you have compared to uh, WASM times or, or the LLVM JIT, multiple tens of megabytes executable size. You can have a 300 kilobyte or four, something like that, uh, less than one megabyte kilo, um, run uh, uh, executable. WASM time is the only uh, runtime that performs well on all architectures because the, the JIT uh, is, the fast JIT is only works for x86-64. Uh, Wammer is mostly developed by by uh, uh, Intel people, so that might be this ex explanation. Um, while um, it was difficult to, but but um, possible to, to to compile the LLVM JIT on ARM, but I couldn't make it work on on the RISC V. But that's probably my poor uh, compilation experience. Um, we have a few questions that we need still remains to, to be answered. Uh, why does Western time generate so many instructions for RISC-V? But we have the answer there, I guess. Why do some benchmarks have look relatively better on embedded architectures? That's an interesting question to, to, to answer. Why are the uh, Western time startup time so low on x86-64 x86 for some architectures? The benchmarks we looked at are only C and C++ benchmarks, so I wonder and this is maybe a question for a benchmarking uh, uh, sort of discussion later on. Do we need other kinds of languages? And what would that, that bring to, to, to the studies? For our projects and co contexts, uh, we need to move WASM modules to different architectures. And therefore, ahead of time, compilation is really not a good option for us, even though that provides the best performance. I didn't study it here, uh, but it, it really does. Um, and for our use case, we would choose WASM time wherever possible because it supports the most features. It has generally good startup time, supports more platforms out of the box to the price of 40 megabytes of, of memory. Uh, choose Wammer uh, fast JIT on x86-64 where executable size is an issue. Choose the Wammer fast interpretation on ARM risk five with low memory. And with that, I thank you for the attention. Thank you.
So we can probably do five minutes of questions. Yes. Yes. May, may I raise a Actually, question? I think Thomas online was. Yeah, sure. yeah thanks. Um, um, that's a great, uh, great talk. Um, thanks for the insights. Um, we, we also gathered um, um, similar uh, results. Um, just two questions. In the embedded um, sphere, chitter is very important. So, so to, to have low chitters when you execute it, not only the, the execution time as a whole, but also uh, if you execute uh, a, a, your program quite long, then um, low chitter is quite, uh, quite valuable, uh, for example, milling machines and so on. Um, yes, I know that uh, the operating system um, plays a very vital role on this, but uh, we do not know as of now how it uh, goes down with uh, WebAssembly runtimes in use when you use something like uh, free artist systems or Linux with a pre-arm, pre -armed RT patch on the systems. Do you have some numbers on it or are there plans um, to provide some numbers on that? Uh, on Jitter. Yes. No, we haven't studied that at all, actually. Uh, but that would be something interesting, uh, in particular, uh, if we if we go into uh, more real time oriented uh, applications. And we, in fact, probably will do that. We have uh, talking to another group at my at the university uh, who's working in robotics. So so that would probably be be um, something we look into. But we haven't done it yet. Thanks. First of all, this is incredibly cool work. And I'm very excited by not only the um, robustness of the um, the setup and the analysis, but also some of the results, which are, some of them are expected, some of them are very unexpected. In particular, the difference um, between embedded and cloud instance um, results that is very surprising to me, and I very much look forward to us digging into it. Um, on the binary size, um, this is more, it, it, it's largely a an artifact of Rust's defaults when it comes to yeah. compilation. So almost all of that is debug info. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't remove that. Yeah, yeah. and um, based on uh, well, but also you wouldn't know necessarily because it's not written out anywhere. So based on conversations over the last two days, um, we decided that as part of our build process, we should release kind of minimal size binaries where we already know. So right now, as of yesterday, we were below two megabytes. We already know that we can fairly easily get to below one megabyte and probably the limit where maintainability ends up being kind of the sweet spot and between size and that is about five, 600 K or so. Okay, so that's um, comparable to Wammer is done, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And um, then an additional, so that that's on, on size, an additional point that I think is very important is startup time um wasm time has an aot compilation mode also and a caching mode which that might actually be the more interesting part where once you load a wasm file the first time it gets compiled but each additional startup time it just gets mf from disk oh. um which is that, that by default that in the cli it yeah. is by default yeah um which i guess means things for measurement between first and consecutive runs but also might help in real use cases. An additional point is um, in the cloud space, kind of naturally you have lo a long running runtime process um, because that's the, the server daemon that then actually instantiates while the process is running. I'd love to chat more about how a model like that could work in the embedded space because in that case, startup times, um, go down, we have the difference between creating a module with its store, um, with all its definitions, and then just creating an instance. Um, and there, 
depending on exact configuration, you should see startup times between single digit and dozens of microseconds. But again, mostly this is very cool and I look forward to digging into some of these results. Thank yeah, you. I'll, me too. Uh, yeah, for, uh, all the turn it off. Oh, yeah. So I was wondering um, whether maybe I missed it, but w is the native compilation was that using LLVM, and did you try also enabling um, LTO or disabling LTO because sometimes it can help and sometimes it can hurt? So I wonder what effect it has. This is with uh, LLVM or Clang um, with the O3 um, optimization flag. Okay. But without LPL. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. 